Welcome back to Simple Truth. I'm changing my intro from Welcome Back to Simple Truth to Welcome Back. I'm sure it's different in nature, right? Here we go. We're in First Samuel. I want to say First Corinthians because I've been there for like two years in Bible study on Wednesday nights. But we're in First Samuel. We're in chapter 17 in the most famous story probably in the entire Bible, David and Goliath, right? Everybody uses it. Even secular people use it. Right? Everybody understands the idea of big, bad, ugly giant, little tiny boy, and the little tiny boy wins. Like Everybody gets that. We all want that, right? The only problem is we're always David and we're never Goliath in any story, right? We're never the Goliath, right? But the problem is, do you know the two people looking at the same situation? They both think they're David. <clears throat> that's a problem, right? So we're in verse 24, right? And the whole idea here is <clears throat> for the 40th day, on the 40th day, the men of Israel, the army of Israel, line up in their battle lines. They shout their little battle cry <clears throat> and Goliath comes out and does his little song and dance. The difference is this day, David is there. He thinks he's there because his dad sent him, but he's really there by an, an appointment and an instruction from God, right? Sometimes God's instruction for our life comes from a familiar voice, another voice, our boss, right? He just says, hey, Annie, I need you to do this, right? Look at verse 24. <clears throat> Here's the response. All the men of Israel, when God says all, he actually means all. Right? When they saw the man, they fled from him and were much afraid. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Check that out. Big bad army. Uh, they were just shouting war cries and they're all excited. They're all in line. But when the Goliath comes, they run the opposite direction. Listen, you and I have seen this a hundred thousand times in life. Everybody's a hero until they need to step forward and be the hero. <clears throat> right? That's including me, starting with me. Right? I always have dreams of being the hero. Got dreams of doing all the great things. Got dreams of being used by God in big ways. Going to go forward until we realize everybody's going backwards and then we go backwards with them. You know the hardest place to stand is? Is when everybody around you turns and suddenly runs. Do you know how hard it is to stand firm, stand strong, go forward? Oh, once they're all past you, it's a piece of cake. You're left there standing by yourself. But when the initial tide happens, how do you stand by your Self. Ever been in a meeting where it starts to turn and everybody's going like, I think this is a bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. And you think it's a good idea. You know, the initial onslaught when everybody's turning, that's really hard for you to keep, right? I don't want to go against my pastor. I don't want to go against my boss. I don't want to go against my wife or husband. I don't want to go against my kids. I don't want to go. What happens if in your family, everybody thinks it's a good idea and you think it's a bad idea? <clears throat> you know, there are bad ideas that lead to death. There are good ideas that go wrong, right? So we need to be careful. We need to we need to make sure that we're doing what God's called us to do, right? <clears throat> the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel and the king will enrich a man who kills him with great riches, will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the men who stood by him, what shall be done? For the man who kills this Philistine takes away the reproach of Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in the same way. So shall it be done to the man who kills him. Check this out. <clears throat> Saul's willing to pay someone else to do his job. Let me let that sink in for a minute. Because... He's willing to pay even by giving his daughter away for somebody else to do his job. It was Saul and only Saul's responsibility to fight this, this man. He's the king. Everybody else can run away and Saul could have been left there by himself and is still his responsibility, God given, and he accepted, right? It was his responsibility to fight this giant and he's willing to pay a huge price, including giving away one of his daughters, if somebody else will do his job. Now, again, that would never happen to you and I, but we've all seen it happen. People who are willing to pay someone else to do that which they are called to do. They know they're called to do it. They know they're called to talk. They know they're called to speak up. They know they're called to give money. They know they're called to... And they're going to let somebody else do it. They'll even offer to do it. I'll give money for this. I don't want to work with the youth, but I'll give money towards the youth leader. 
I, I don't want to do men's ministry, but I'll give money towards it. I don't want to. I don't want to help fix a roof, but I'll give money towards it. Like, like, <clears throat> God lays something on our hearts, and we go sell it to a bunch of people, hoping that somebody else will do it. You ever seen that when you're sitting at a, at a meeting at church, somebody walks up and says, "I, I God's laid it on my heart. We need to start small groups. We need to do this, right? We 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 need to do this." I love how it starts out. Because usually people are honest. God laid it upon my heart. Which means, thus saith the Lord. This is not a suggestion. This is a, we need to start small groups. The problem is, God laid it on their heart. And they don't want to do it. So what do they do? Hey, all of you, make this happen. Do you know how many times this happens? Our motto down here is, what do you want to do? How can we help you do it? What do you want to do? What has God laid on your heart? What is thus saith the Lord? When you come down here and you say, hey, I want to make a video. I don't say like, hey, here's what you need to do. Here's how you need to do it. So what do you want to talk about? What do you want to do? How can I help you get there? The minute it becomes, what do you want to do and how can I do it for you? You got normal everyday church. Every day somebody walks into church and says, I think we should do this, which is code for, you all need to do this for me. I think we should have a banquet. I think we should have children's ministry. I think we should have youth ministry. I think we should do, 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 which then means you all need to make this happen. Oh, by the way, I'll be happy to write a check towards it, but I'm not going to do it. Do, do, do you see that? Like that's, that's what happened here. King Saul, responsibility, fight the bad guy. You're getting paid to fight the bad guy. That's what God's called you to do to fight the bad guy. Uh, I don't want to fight the bad guy. Somebody else fight the bad guy. Right? <clears throat> Isn't it funny? We'd much rather walk along somebody who has a disease than have the disease ourselves. What if God looks at you and says, I want you to fight the battle? Why won't you fight the battle? No, 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 no. We're going to move heaven and earth to not fight the battle. But when somebody else is going through the battle, notice what we say to them. Oh. <gasps> We're just praying that God will give you strength for this battle. Right? Y'all, thank goodness God chose you and thinks you're worthy of suffering for the cause of Christ. Like, look at all the goofy stuff that we say. But then when somebody says to us, we just want to go away. We go to every doctor, get it, get it gone. Right? We go to every counselor, get it gone. I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to think this way anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I'll pay you to take my battle away. So my simple truth today is pretty clear what's God calling you to do and how are you trying not to do it right what is God asking you to do and how are you trying to get out from doing it who are you willing to pay so you don't have to do what God has called you to do don't be like King Saul right you don't have to like the battle God's called you to. You don't have to want to. You, you can be scared to death of the giant. But it's your battle. Don't pay somebody else to fight it for you. Because just like in the story of Deborah with Barak, Deborah says to him, hey, you, you, you're going to be the, the commander of the army. You're going to get a great victory. And he looks at her and says, yeah, I'm not going if you don't go. And she says, okay, but your victory is going to somebody else. Saul gets really mad at David when David gets claimed. When, when the women start singing, David has killed his ten thousands and Saul his thousands. And Saul gets really upset about that. Here's where that started. When Saul should have been killing his thousands, his one, he was letting somebody else do it. Don't get mad when somebody else gets credit for what God called you to do. Because they stepped up while you ran away. I can keep going, obviously. So, simple truth. We'll see you next time. We're going to keep going on with the story of David and Goliath and David. And uh, maybe we'll get through more than another verse. See you next time.